belong to the Laridae family of birds, and are closely related to terns. The classification of seagulls has been debated heavily in the past century, and more thorough research has called for recent changes. As it currently stands, they are classified into different genera, though this, of course, could change if new evidence to prove otherwise is discovered. Also, technically the name seagull is considered a layperson's term, and most ornithologists and biologists do not use it. But we're just a bunch of animal nerds on this show, so we're gonna use seagull anyway. Woohoo! Conformity! There are somewhere around 50 species of seagulls, and they are found worldwide. Yes, even Antarctica. In the past, they were more likely to be seen closer to ocean shorelines, but we have actually had an impact on where they live. Nowadays, seagulls are seen along the ocean, as well as near lakes, ponds, parking lots, and trash heaps. Seagulls eat a variety of foods, but for the most part, they are scavengers. Our tendency to throw away basically everything has given rise to seagulls moving inland and circling our trash mounds for all kinds of yummy morsels. This can actually be harmful to them because they'll eat just about anything. Seagulls have been found with large pieces of plastic, metal, wrappers, basically anything you might throw away in their stomachs. Heck, there was even one recently who sort of became internet famous because it flew off with someone's GoPro camera. That's not a crab, you silly seagull. Oh, oh wait, that, that is a crab. <laughs> nice job. When they aren't dumpster diving, they eat crustaceans, worms, fish, rodents, reptiles, seeds, fruits, dead bodies. I mean, we weren't kidding when we said they eat just about anything. You know what I'm saying? They will even eat the eggs of other seagulls, so they're a pretty big contributor to their own death rates. Oh, and those crabs that they eat, they will actually fly them way up high and drop them on hard surfaces to get the meat inside. So yeah, they're pretty vicious. You can't see me, but I'm, I'm shaking my head right now. Friggin' birds. Identifying a specific species of seagull can actually be pretty difficult because they have a lot of similarities between each other throughout different life stages. Typically, they're rather robust birds with a white underside and soft grayish top. Their beaks are rounded and hooked, appear in different colors, and can usually be one of the best indicators of species, along with foot color, which also varies pretty drastically. The smallest seagull, little gull, has a wingspan of about two feet, while the largest, great black-backed gull, can have a wingspan of more than five feet. In general, the larger gulls have white heads, and the smaller gulls have black heads, though that's just a general rule of thumb and by no means a definitive measure. Also, their wings are usually tipped with black feathers, and this pigmentation actually helps protect the feathers from damage. When seagulls are born, they are generally mottled in color. This helps them to blend in with their surroundings, protecting them from predators. Seagulls will lay two to three eggs in a nest, made on stones, moss, feathers, and even seaweed. The eggs typically take about a month to hatch, and the babies will become independent approximately two months later. Seagulls seem to be able to live more than 20 years under the right conditions, though they're prey for many animals, including sharks, hawks, eagles, foxes, weasels, and even dolphins. They may be considered annoying by many people, 